Che cosa fate qui? Assassini! God will see you pay for your crimes! The Assassin's Creed Ezio collection has launched, bundling Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood and Revelations onto the current generation of consoles, which is ace because Ezio is, let's face it, gaming's second favourite Italian. He's also the best thing about Assassin's Creed in general, so without any further ado, I'm Johnny Chiodini, gaming's third favourite Italian, and here are five reasons why Ezio Auditore is the best assassin. Number one, Altair was a jerk. Another word and I'll put my blade to your throat. Starting with a nice, friendly, non-contentious one then. Right, now I can get nostalgic for Assassin's Creed like the best of them, but let's face facts, Altair isn't exactly the greatest of protagonists. In fact, at the very start of Assassin's Creed, Altair is arrogant and overreaching. He assumes the rules just don't apply to him, and in so doing, puts his own men in danger, and oh yeah, kills an old man for absolutely no reason. Yeah, have some of that, you innocent pensioner. Then after this little stunt, he quite rightly gets busted back down to initiate until he can prove his ability to adhere to the titular Assassin's Creed, at which point he goes into full-on sulky brat mode. You are arrogant and overconfident. Were you not the one to say that nothing is true and everything is permitted? He whines to his boss about how unfair everything is and doesn't stop until the end of the game when said boss turns out to be evil anyway. So by the end of Assassin's Creed, he's really learned nothing except for maybe how to eavesdrop on conversations from park benches. And sure, Altair's journey founded the franchise, but it's hardly awe-inspiring. And what kind of assassin order makes grabbing onto ledges while falling a skill you have to earn? Sorry mate, can't let you stop yourself from dying there, you're not a high enough rank, you're just gonna have to get used to having broken legs until the big man makes you captain. Anyway, Ubisoft did at least realise they'd made Altair a bit too frumpy later on down the line. There were entire sections in Assassin's Creed Revelations dedicated to making Altair a more palatable character. I'm not sure they worked, but hey, they tried. Number 2, Ezio on the other hand, was cool. When Ezio arrived in Assassin's Creed 2, he was a breath of fresh air. At the start of his journey, he's a carefree young man, running about the streets with his brother and having frank conversations about genitalia with his mother. I have plenty of outlets. I meant besides vaginas. Mother. Things of course turn serious for Ezio when his father and brother are framed and publicly executed and he's thrust into the life of an assassin. But here's the important thing. Despite seeing half his family murdered and beginning a blood vendetta, he never loses his sense of humour or his charm. Ezio oozes charisma even as he undertakes some pretty serious wet work throughout Assassin's Creed 2. The Creed simply isn't a lodestone to him in the same way it is for Altair in Assassin's Creed, and where his predecessor made being an assassin seem like an awful chore, Ezio flourishes. He thrives as an assassin, which, to be fair to Altair, may have something to do with most of the creed itself going right out the window for AC2, especially the bit about trying to be discreet at all times. Anyway, the point is this, Ezio is a man of action who is nonetheless capable of humour and tenderness, qualities that only deepen in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. In Brotherhood, Ezio now leads the assassin order in their quest to liberate Rome from the clutches of the Templars. As well as being really good story fodder, this premise adds meaning to Brotherhood's open world, linking it intrinsically to Ezio's very being. It feels like your city, slowly turning from something hostile and alien into something you helped build and improve. What do you make of this? Then of course, Ezio's tale concludes with Assassin's Creed Revelations, when he's an old man with a striking resemblance to a silverback gorilla. And while Revelations felt more like Assassin's Creed was treading water than propelling the franchise to new heights, it was nice to see Ezio taking it easy for a bit. Despite the insane body count, Revelations is effectively a bit of a jolly for Ezio, who's decided out of idle curiosity to see how assassins in other parts of the world do their thing. Ezio, in other words, is a class act, which is why more games have been dedicated to him than any other assassin. He has a well-defined three-part journey throughout which he never ceases to be entertaining or determined, which is why Assassin's Creed 3 was, in my estimation, such an enormous disappointment, which leads us neatly on to... Number 3. Connor from Assassin's Creed 3 was a super jerk. Connor from Assassin's Creed 3 is rubbish. 
Yeah, he's been through some stuff and none of it's been pleasant, but where Ezio was a multifaceted character capable of both levity and gravitas, Connor is just permanently angry. He doesn't waver from his petulant, sulky attitude one bit all the way through his quest, a quest which, if memory serves, has two main objectives, one to let everyone know how angry he is, and two to find Charles Lee. Charles Lee. Where is Charles Lee? Kill Charles Lee. Where is Charles Lee? Connor being perma-furious in Assassin's Creed 3 is not helped, of course, by the opening section of the game being from the perspective of Haytham Kenway, Connor's father and a Templar who is more interesting than his son by a country mile. So yeah, that's two assassins Ezio is more entertaining than, and to be honest, if we've done those, we may as well do the rest, but in the interests of time, let's lump them all together with one sweeping generalisation. Number four, the other assassins weren't as good as Ezio either. Yeah, that should do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, Edward Kenway is pretty alright, and Black Flag is definitely in my top three Assassin's Creed games, but for the most part, he was pretty aimless. What's-His-Face from Assassin's Creed Unity was pretty forgettable, to be honest, and while I liked Evie Fry an awful lot, Jacob was just a little bit of a dickhead. Oh, what's this, Greenie? Assassin Christmas. It was just irritating, though not nearly as bad as Altair or Connor, I admit. In fact, I imagine Ezio probably would have enjoyed going for a pint with Jacob Fry, if they happened to be from the same time period, that is. And speaking of time periods, reason number five that Ezio is the best assassin of all time, he was simply in the right place at the right time. Renaissance Italy is a really interesting, vibrant, lovely backdrop for a story. It was also a really exciting time in which it was possible to play around with loads of gear upgrades for Ezio and get away with it because, hey, Leonardo da Vinci. So that certainly helped, but more than Renaissance Italy, Ezio was in the right place at the right time for Assassin's Creed as a series. Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood made a proper global phenomenon out of Assassin's Creed. The Ezio games became the sweet spot for Assassin's Creed in that it had lots of interesting new ideas at the time, but it hadn't yet outgrown itself. Rather than being a bloated mess like Assassin's Creed 3 and, arguably, Assassin's Creed Unity, the Ezio games were lean and well thought out and, most importantly, loads of fun. Ezio was the best assassin because he's cool, sure, but he also had the benefit of being the figurehead of the franchise when it was at its absolute best. So there you go, five reasons why Ezio is the best assassin. Doubtless some of you will disagree, however, so please feel free to tell me why Connor isn't a whiny little twerp in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please do think about liking and subscribing. There are plenty of other videos for you to watch if you so wish, but if not, then no pressure. Either way, thanks very much for watching.